cables are finally here. And now it's time to wire up this puppy. So I want to give you a quick editor's note here, and for some reason my lapel mic decided to call it quits when recording this. So all of the audio in this video is from actually the built-in microphone on my camcorder, and it's not the best, but it should work just fine. And as you can see, most of the cables are finally hooked up inside the cabinet, and to save some time, I didn't show how I installed all the end stop switches. And then of course routing the cables from the limit switches, through the drag chains, all the way down, and back into the electric cabinet. I've also wired up the start and stop switches, and also the secondary switch from the emergency stop, into the controller down here and I've of course installed the brain box. Earlier today I had a comment on part 2 of this video series from someone who's actually building the exact same machine that I am and he was wondering how I installed the limit switches so I thought I might take a couple of minutes to actually show you exactly what I did. So it's really nothing fancy. So let's start with the, uh, the C axis limit switch. Here I have a small 90 degree aluminium bracket that the limit switch activates and on the subject of never throwing anything away like I said with this bracket this bracket is actually left over from a shower curtain rod or yeah shower curtain profile that I got I think in 2014 so I've had this offcut laying around in my parts bin for seven years now and I finally found a use for it and it actually turned out quite nice since it protects the limit switch. And here we have the x-axis limit switch. And this small piece of aluminium extrusion is actually left over from when I renovated my table saw, or rebuilt my table saw. This was the old rip fence on it. And to actuate the switch, I have this aluminium bracket. that's bolted on the x-axis plate. And as my C-limit switch, that's the simplest one of all. Just another one of these L-shaped aluminium brackets. And the switch is activated by the bearing block on the linear rail. And all these switches are positioned so that my work coordinate system starts at this corner, the front left corner. And if we use the, uh, the right hand rule, like this, that means that we have X, Y, and C positive direction. And this is how all CNC machines should be set up. Or at least all three axis CNC machines should be set up. So now it's time to turn on the power in the electric cabinet. And to make sure we don't fry anything in the process, I'm going to give you a crash course on how you green line and commission a machine. Now I've attached the plug to the electrical socket and we have power coming into this switch. And just to show you that I'm telling the truth, uh, it helps if we have it in AC mode. And we have right around 230 volts, which is perfectly fine. And we have nothing on the output side. So that means that we have incoming power to the main breaker, that's the first step. 
Now, if this was a bigger electric system, I would now mark off these two incoming lines on the electrical schematic with a green marker to show that I have power coming to this switch. That's the first step. Now, before we turn on this switch, we want to make sure that we don't have any short circuit on the secondary side, not between the face and neutral, and not between the face and ground. So we turn over to resistance measuring, and we have no connection between face and neutral. We have no connection between neutral and ground inside the cabinet. And we have no connection between face and ground inside the cabinet. And that means we won't blow anything up by turning the switch. But before I do so, I'm also going to turn off these two fuses. Now I have power on the secondary side. So now we have power coming from the main breaker to the fuses. Which you can see here and here. But nothing on the secondary side. And now we perform the same measurement towards ground on the secondary side of the breaker. And we have no short circuit towards ground on either of the breakers. Which means it's perfectly fine to turn them on. Nothing will blow up. And like I said, if there was a bigger cabinet, I would now mark these two wires in the electrical schematic with a green marker to show that I have power coming to the fuses and from the fuses. So now we need to check the distribution from the fuses and out towards the system. So we are in AC mode. And these two fuses go to this pole. And this pole. But nothing on the output side. And now I know that my 2 3rd volt distribution goes through these terminal blocks, so I'm going to disconnect them. And if you don't have terminal blocks with disconnects like this, you're going to have to check the wires all the way to the power supplies before you turn on the contactor in your case. So now let's check the output side of the contactor towards ground, and we have no short circuit there, no short circuit there. And we also have no short circuit on this red control wire cable, which goes to our start and stop button. We have 583 ohms, which is over the coil, but nothing else. So now it's okay to turn the, the contactor. And since this is a really small system, the green lining is now finished. Now on a big machine, the green lining process might take two or three weeks where you follow and trace every single line on the electrical schematic in this fashion and turn on the cabinet one piece at a time while continually checking for short circuits on the output side. And this should hopefully help you to not fry anything if you do it yourself. And now I do have some trammings and calibrations and stuff to do. But I think that the next step is to install the router. Now I was planning to run this power cord all the way down through these cable chains down to the electric cabinet. But I've actually kind of reconsidered because I think I want to be able to use the router off the CNC as well, uh, and in that case having the, the power cord all the way through the cable chains would be an absolute hassle every time I want to remove it. So I think the plan right now is actually to suspend the power cord from the ceiling, and that should mean that I can use the entire work envelope without too much of a problem. Now if I do get a dedicated spindle for this, like a 2.2 kilowatt water-cooled spindle, then that of course will be permanently installed and all the cables will run through the, the cable chains. Ah. So now the cable is attached to the hook. 
let's see if I can move the entire machine over to the uh, that corner. And contact. And I think I need to adjust the cable a bit. And of course, I also need to lower the C height to the maximum depth. Uh, C minus 100. Yeah, and that should work just fine. And now we can home it again. Now, I know you all came for something, and it's finally time. I've got some G code loaded up, my work coordinate system is set, and it's finally time to fire this puppy up and see what it can do. Now, you should be aware that this is live for me. I haven't cut anything on this before, I haven't run any G code. So I have my feed override set really, really low, and I will have my finger on the stop button for the entire cut. So uh, let me move you in a bit closer and uh, let's fire it up. So I guess, thanks for watching, like, comment and subscribe, and be on the lookout for part uh, 5, I think, of this series. Uh, and in that one I will finish up all the, all the cable management and do some accuracy tests on it. And also talk a bit of pros and cons with this kit and some of the troubles I ran into. But until then, you can watch some of these.